Small modular reactors are the way of the future. It's all happening now. You want to get in early on this wave. Think of a nuclear power plant on a smaller scale, way easier to build, way less expensive. Here's a bunch of stocks that are involved in either the small modular reactors or even more importantly, the services and solutions that are going to be helping this industry grow. And a couple of headlines I want to tell you that were the turning of the tide that made all the difference. I'm talking about Oracle and Google. We'll get into that. But here's the 28 companies that are involved with small nuclear reactors or peripheral services and solutions. And they're not all publicly traded companies. So if there's a ticker symbol, I try to provide it for you. And the point of this entire video is to help you get a starting point if you want to look into this stuff yourself. There's stock picks that I believe are even better than anything you're going to find here. And that's what we talk about in the newsletter. But for most of us, you might want to get some exposure to this or you want to look into this for an opportunity. I'll tell you a few points that stood out to me when I went through these companies. And to be clear, I'm not saying to buy or to not buy anything that we're talking about in this video. I'm just telling you some of the research that I've been doing for the newsletter. And this is some of the information that might help you do your own research to find what you want to invest in. These first two are ETFs and they might be perfect because what I'm talking about is that the real profits are not going to be from the actual small modular nuclear reactor. They're going to be from the companies that are providing services and solutions to that business as they build the reactor. And these two ETFs focus a lot on the peripheral companies and that's what I'm talking about. Range Nuclear Renaissance Index ETF, ticker symbol NUKZ. The fund is diversified along the nuclear supply chain, giving investors exposures to companies involved in advanced reactors, utilities, construction services, and fuel. And also VanEck Uranium and Nuclear ETF, NLR. And they invest in a bunch of uranium mining companies and companies which build and engineer and maintain nuclear power facilities and reactors. Companies involved in the production of electricity from nuclear sources and companies that provide equipment, technology, or services to the nuclear power industry. That's what I'm talking about. That's where the profits are going to be. And I'm not saying that that means that these ETFs are going to go higher because it depends what's in them and how they manage them, etc. Yada, yada. Listen, I also believe that Cameco could be a good option for a lot of people. Cameco is one of the largest global providers of uranium fuel needed to energize a clean air world. They've got controlling ownership in the world's largest high-grade reserves and low-cost operations. And they have ownership interests in other companies that are also in this space. This nuclear power supply chain is going to be the thing you want to be involved with. I say that a lot of these companies aren't even good investments, but sometimes even an average company, if they say uranium in the name of the company, it will benefit when people are going crazy for uranium concepts or uranium stocks involved in nuclear power supplies. Utilities around the world rely on Cameco to provide global nuclear fuel solutions for the generation of safe, reliable, carbon-free nuclear power. It's a Canadian company, but they trade in the New York Stock Exchange as well. But they are the world's second largest miner of uranium behind a Kazakhstan-based company. And why I like them is that Chemical has investments across the nuclear fuel cycle, including ownership interest in a nuclear technology equipment manufacturer and a laser uranium enrichment technology company. And I also want to talk to you about another one, Centris Energy. It really stood out to me. And just so you know, there's no, I don't own any of the shares of any of these companies I'm talking about. No one's paid any kind of fee for me to talk about this stuff. It's just when I was doing my, my research, I thought, it would help you guys if we made a video about this. Listen to this one. Centris Energy Corporation, LEU. Current large reactors use low enriched uranium to produce electricity, but advanced reactors and an emerging technology called small modular reactors will create a new source of demand. Reactor designs and development use a more concentrated form of uranium called high assay, low enriched uranium, the World Nuclear Association says. Citrus is the only company in the U.S. with a license to make Halio, Halo and has been producing small quantities. With this license and manufacturing experience, Citrus is well positioned to make the fuel for a growing number of advanced reactors, small modular reactors. Halo can also be used in conventional reactors. 
New Scale Power Corporation, SMR. U.S. Department of Energy's goals is to foster domestic and friendly nation supply chain for low enriched uranium for current reactors and the next generation of nuclear technologies. If you want to get involved with this space in some way right now, in my opinion, I believe, because things are starting to happen. This is going to be rolling out so quickly. I told you that everything's going logarithmic now. Look at the speed of this. We are so close to having nuclear reactors in our car engines. In new scale designs and markets, small modular nuclear reactors. So the company that builds the reactor. The design is smaller than a traditional nuclear reactor. It can be used to replace retiring coal plants and to provide base load power. Companies that are at the forefront of these innovations, particularly in areas like small modular reactors and advanced fuel types like HALO, are well positioned to benefit from the growing demand for clean, reliable energy, Walker says. And there's a bunch of companies too that aren't publicly traded, but they are part of a, a nation. So, for example, Multex Energy and Terrestrial Energy, a couple of Canadian companies that don't have shares as far as I know. Westinghouse Electric Company and GE Hitachi Nuclear Energy. Now, here's one of the ones I wanted to call out because I want to tell you that there are risks here. This is a SPAC. You remember SPACs? Spring Valley Acquisition Corp. is a publicly traded special purpose acquisition corporation. That's a SPAC. With a focus on acquiring a $1 billion enterprise value in the sustainability industry. Listen to this. It's just gobbledygook here. Our objective is to acquire a privately held business that can benefit from our financial acumen, operational expertise, and industry network to grow into a leading publicly traded bellwether. We plan to leverage our team's unique experience and partnership approach to investing to create a growth plan for a target company that delivers superior shareholder value. Get away from this one. It's just ridiculous. I like this one at first glance. GE Vernova. GEV is the ticker symbol, and GE is working with Hitachi. Shares are trading at $256. They don't have a price earnings ratio because they don't have any earnings. But they still got a market capitalization of $70 billion. And while they lost $438 million in 2023, they lost $2.74 billion in 2022. Here's the GEV chart. You would think that the shares would be going the other way based on the ongoing losses and also the close to cash crunch. When you look at their balance sheet, the current liabilities are greater than the current assets. That is something you're going to want to watch closely and carefully. As soon as the next quarterly results come out, you want to see what kind of trend is happening there because if they're already underwater, and this gets out of hand, that often leads to a cash crunch, but they're a large enough company that they can borrow $80 trillion from wherever. They provide energy consulting, financial services, gas power, grid solutions, nuclear energy, power conversion, renewable energy, steam power, and so on. Fluor Corporation, FLR, is interesting. They have a price earnings ratio of 20, which is pretty tremendous. Shows that they're making money. They're trading at $46.92. And they pulled in $139 million in net income. That's profit from $15.47 billion in revenues. So they're making plenty in revenues and they're converting that down into pretty strong earnings, giving them a very respectable 20 on the price earnings. And when they're in this kind of industry, which is going to be all the rage pretty soon, a lot of money is going to be coming into the whole nuclear renaissance industry. And you'll see price earnings of 20 go to 50 and all of a sudden the share price is that much higher as well. Nanonuclear, NNE, an emerging micro-reactor technology company led by a world-class nuclear engineering team. The team is so important in any kind of investment. When you're going to invest in a stock, you need to know who's steering the ship and what they've done before, what kind of results do they get, and what are they trying to attain. So I'll take their word for it that it's a world-class nuclear engineering team. And if that's true, then that might be a company that you want to get invested in. And I looked into it a little bit further. Total assets of $16.4 million. Total liabilities of $3.4 million. So they're sitting pretty on the balance sheet. Pretty good financial health. 
A very small company, though. This is from U.S. News. Electricity demand from data centers is expected to continue growing, especially given the boom in energy gobbling artificial intelligence. The outlook for the nuclear industry has never been more promising with a renewed global interest from both public and private sectors driving unprecedented momentum, says James Walker, a nuclear physicist. And he's also the CEO of Nano Nuclear Energy, NNE. As the world confronts the urgent need to transition to clean energy, nuclear power is increasingly recognized as a vital component of the solution. With the insatiable energy demands of artificial intelligence, the world is returning to nuclear power, says Blaine Townsend, director at Baylord. Its low emissions and near-constant base load of power should make it part of the solution. Terra Power is a startup founded by Bill Gates, broke ground for construction of its first commercial reactor last week in Wyoming, where a coal plant is shutting down. A lot of professional money is on this space and in this space right now, and it's going to be causing a wave to follow from retail investors. More than 80 commercial small modular reactor designs being developed around the world target varied outputs in different applications such as electricity, hybrid energy systems, heating, water desalinization, and steam for industrial applications. But here's the two headlines I wanted to share with you that made all of the difference. This is a tipping point in the entire way that the economy is going to be working for energy needs. Oracle will use three small nuclear reactors to power a new 1 gigawatt artificial intelligence data center. And at the same time, other companies are getting into the game too. For example, Google. Google can use small nuclear reactors to power data centers. Now that publicly traded companies have gotten into the game, these big corporations are going to be driving this whole renaissance. And a lot of these small modular nuclear reactors are designed to last for about 30 years without refueling. A lot of nations are getting involved with this too, besides the United States. Russia, China, United Kingdom, Canada are among the most advanced countries in the development of small modular reactor technology. Here's a chart of current projects under development. This is from Interdata. You can see United States, Russia, China, Canada, Japan, United Kingdom, This is from BBC, U.S. firm to open Yorkshire nuclear reactor factory. Holtec International is the company, and they're privately held, so you can't buy shares in them. South Yorkshire has been chosen as a home for an American company's factory, which makes nuclear reactors. Holtec, the world's largest exporter of capital nuclear components, that's what I'm talking about, a company that does that usually would do a lot better than even the top-level reactor builders. It would represent 1.5 billion pound investment. It created about 3,000 jobs for the next 20 years. This is from CNBC. The United States wants to triple nuclear power by 2050. Power plant restarts like Three Mile Island represent only a fraction of the nuclear energy the U.S. needs in the coming decades. The U.S. needs to at least triple its nuclear fleet to keep on pace with demand slash carbon dioxide emissions and ensure the nation's energy security, said Mike Goff, acting assistant secretary for the Office of Nuclear Energy at the Department of Energy. The U.S. currently maintains the largest nuclear fleet in the world with 94 operational reactors, totaling about 100 gigawatts of power. And all of those nuclear reactors that we have only provide about 18% of our electricity needs nationally. That number will grow, and it's going to grow rapidly. The U.S. needs to add 200 gigawatts of nuclear power, Goff told CNBC. This is roughly equivalent to building 200 new plants based on the current average reactor size in the United States fleet of about a gigawatt. This is from the Office of Nuclear Energy, Advanced Small Modular Reactors, SMRs. Advanced Small Modular Reactors are a key part of the department's goal to develop safe, clean, and affordable nuclear power options. Advanced SMRs offer many advantages, such as relatively small physical footprints, reduced capital investment, ability to be sited in locations not possible for larger nuclear power plants. SMRs also offer distinct safeguards, security, and non-proliferation advantages. The department has provided substantial support to the development of light water-cooled SMRs, which are under licensing review by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, 
and will likely be deployed in the late 2020s to early 2030s. So this is the way the world's going. There's going to be some options here for you to think about. But however you look at it, there's more opportunity here than risk. So make your own decisions and live with the results of those. And if you want to talk to me directly, then become a Peter Leeds Insider. PeterLeeds.com slash insiders.